Hi, Marcos. Nice to see you. How are you today? Fine, Gustavo. Very nice to see you also. I'm talking here from Argentina. Cool. So I'm here from sunny Chicago. We still haven't seen the beginning of winter, so we're good. Very excited to be here and thank you for making the time. So the purpose of this is to share basically a little bit about yourself, your background, to, so people can get to know you and reach out. So who are you? Who's Marcos? <laughs> Oof. Well, uh, Marcos is a person that is 40 years old, but still has like a child mindset in some way. Um, I, I, I love what I'm doing. I am a culture designer, passionate. I, I, I work all my life in, in HR departments. And well, nowadays I, I am scuba diving this new world about culture, leadership and coaching. And well, that's why we are here with you because in, in some of that experience, I, I met Fearless Culture and we start a, a, a very nice relation with you. Cool, great to hear that. And while you were talking about scuba diving and thinking all my upcoming vacation with my, my family, there are many skills, no, not, I mean, there, there are basic skills that you need to be a good scuba diver, but also each scuba diver brings something different. They have different styles. So when it comes to facilitating and help people like navigate those uh, deep waters and getting deeper and, and discover their path through to get back to a better place, what's your superpower? Uh, I think that one of them is I, in terms of conversation and dialogue, I, I hear, I think that I hear well the persons that are talking with me. And I think that that comes from my HR experience where I met all the time with issues, personal issues and, and work uh, life issues of, of the people with I work for. And I think that that's one superpower that I have. I, I, I want all the time to hear and be calm on what I am talking with the client or with the people that I, that I, uh, that I am in front. Cool. And definitely in today's world to have people that have the patient, the skill, eh, eh, eh. And the empathy to listen is not easy. You know, there are a lot of people talking about it, but very few practicing it. But also listening, like every superpower has a downside. So what's the problem with maybe HR people are listening too much to their uh, team members? Uh, well, if you don't go to the action, if you don't do anything about what you are hearing, I think that there is an issue. You have to hear just to discover what can be the approach or, or the suggestion uh, or the idea that you have for them. So it's the first step, but then you have to be proactive in giving advices and suggestions uh, also because they are asking for that. And I think that that is important. And another superpower that I'm trying to not discover, but work on is the humility to know that I don't know any, uh, uh, all things. I have to be all the time reading, um, discovering new authors, new, new information. And that, that's something really important. And I think that you are in the same road and in some way, in terms of in in terms of culture, you are like a, an ambassador and a referent of that. So that's another superpower that I am trying to to develop in a more uh, emphasis, how to say, emphatic way. Cool. Thank you. So uh, I was thinking about the, the listening aspect and, and also, you know, some people see HR as, okay, they go to people when we're having an issue 
a, a, while it's important to have a trusted figure, there are two things that usually happen. On one hand is, are the HR people, and I know this is sensitive because you work in HR for many, many years, mm -hmm. Are the HR people representing people's interests or the company interests? So, mm -hmm. uh, and the second part of that question is uh, when we create a figure that people have to go to to talk when there are issues, aren't we uh, disencouraging employees to talk to their colleagues or talk to their managers instead? I know this yes. is a very sensitive topic, so take a deep breath. Now it's <laughs> it's 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 uh, really interesting. The the my answer is yes. I think that HR should move the, the way that is working and supporting teams to empower them to know how to develop new skills, to know how to affront a tough conversation, to know how to talk with the manager, but not being the, the guy that goes with the problem to other person. We don't have to be in the middle. We have to, to, to boost courage and, and powerful to the guys of a company to, to be more conscious on what they are doing and give all the skills that they need to do the things uh, personally. Uh, so I, I, I and think, do you think that most yeah. HR people are there? I like your approach, but do you think people are there or there's still a long way to go? Uh, not only HR people, uh, managers, directors, CEOs uh, have the same opinion. And, and they think that HR should be like a fire, uh, how do you say, a bombero, a fire? Fighter, yeah. A fighter, and it's not about that. Uh, so if I have to go uh, to the past and, and rethink my way of working, I should change some things because my man, my man mindset uh, has changed uh, with the with the years. One thing I always tell people. You don't have to go to the past because the purpose of life is that we learn and we improve forward, no? So we were yeah. born with all the, the recipes and answer, what's the purpose of discovery? Uh, you talk about this, your second superpower being a, 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 a open to learning, not believing that you have all the answers. But usually mm -hmm. one of the things that we see is that leaders, former leaders tend to think mm -hmm. that they have all the answers or want to have the last word. We know that from research, it shows that most leaders believe that they are really self-aware, but then only a fraction, like 4%, 5% really are. So how do you deal in your line of work with leaders that are unaware and that don't have a clue that they don't know what they don't know? Uh, it's difficult because that maybe is a, a behavior that it's very strong and it's part of uh, the personality of that person. But I know that is that is not the the way to do things. And maybe with strong questions, uh, we can change or we can um, help that person trying to think from other side, uh, from other perspective, because I, I was part of a team, I have huge, a lot of, of managers, and I know that that kind of managers are not the ones that give me psychological safety, that, that they don't give me the space to be the guy that I would like to be. So um, I, I, I don't recommend that, obviously, and I think that they should start changing the way, and, and the that idea that the manager knows all and is there to resolve all the problems. And the world is changing and I think that we are going to another uh, step that is to be more, have more humility and know that you don't are there to give all the answers and maybe saying, I don't know, you are the guy that knows more than me is too much uh, better than trying to answer all the things that it's obvious that you don't know. Thank you. 
imagine that I'm a client or any client that reaches out to you and say, hey, Marcos, I want to change my company culture. Mm -hmm. How can I do it? What would be the first advice that you would give them in that case when they reach out to say, hey, let's evolve my culture? <laughs> yeah, I think that it's like when someone go to the gym and want to go to the, 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 the more stronger uh, pesa, how do you say? The, weights the, or the, yeah, the heaviest weights, yeah, or... The, the heaviest weight and it's not about that. It's something that it's step by step, but the, the most important thing is know the start point, know where you are and where you want to go because maybe they don't know all what they have to know about their company. So they have to have a, a, a very specific photo uh, about what they are and involve most part of the company to work on the design of the new uh, path for that company. It's not about three or four persons designing in a dark room what they want to be. You should participate the, the people of the company, but you have to know that maybe some processes, you can change them easily and, and in a fast way. But talking about behaviors, you know that you have to be calm and you have to be patient and be very consistent and uh, re, 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 revisiting all the time the behaviors that you want to change. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And in that building on that, no, uh, are you uh, an advocate of helping companies like achieve a quick win, something maybe small, but they can say, well, we change something or do you aim more for more structural, uh, complex, long-term changes when it comes to transforming culture? I, I think that the, the client all the time needs both. They, they, mm -hmm. they, they need to have quick wins. They need to show that what they are doing is good and uh, they, are, they are gaining good results. So in one hand, we have to put focus on that quick wins. And on the other hand, we have to put focus on things that uh, should be resolved in the middle or, or in the long term. So I think that it's a salad of both things that you mentioned. Good way of putting it. I'm getting hungry here. And uh, the last thing I want to get from you is a, share one of your best kept secrets you now when it comes to something that you learned about culture and in the past few months, few years, and say, wow, now that I know this, I'm able to create a more meaningful change because of X also. So. Mm -hmm. I, I think that talking about culture, when more specific you are, about what you are talking and what you are working uh, is the best way to get good results and to get the respect of your client. Because as we know, culture is a, a, a very big um, um, word, word and not all the time we are talking about the same things. So when you, as we work in the fearless culture, when you have methodology, when you have the, 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 the structure to show very specific things that you are developing, you are working, you are discovering, you are in the, in, 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 in the good road uh, to work really well and, and to get good results. So that is the word that I can bring to the table specific things. Amazing, thank you. Um, so wrapping up, uh, these interviews are about building connections, right? Mm -hmm. So why people should reach out to you? What can you provide for them to say, hey, Marcos, help me out with this, but also what are the things that you want to learn or get from others? So if they're curious, they can reach out to you as well. Yeah, sure. Uh, they can reach me because I am like you, uh, in the uh, in other part of the world, I am really I, I love what I do. I love sharing experience. I love sharing what I know. I love 
learning from, from others. I know that we are all in the same wave, uh, developing new methodologies, trying to, to give the best that we can to the client. And I really, I am really open and I really interesting, interested in, in, in sharing experience, information about clients, about what I do, about what I am being learning, author books, whatever. I, I, as I told you the other day, I was talking with a colleague from South Africa for the first time, and that's a good uh, example of the power that this community can have, because I, I won't be able to have a conversation than the one that I have last week if I was not part of this community. Awesome, great to hear that. Great to hear that you're making connections and thank you for your, your time and for your wisdom and looking forward to connect with other people. See you soon. Of course, thank you very much for the time.